What string percussion instrument was incorporated into the Afro-Brazilian martial art Capoeira? Which local theater company will hold major auditions in the near future for a Pulitzer Prize winning musical? You want answers? Watch Artico, coming up right now. Caparera, a martial arts tradition developed by African slaves in Brazil in the 16th century. It's a lyrical yet forceful combination of kicks, acrobatics, and dance-like moves, supported by music and the call of the balloonbo, a single-string percussion instrument and musical bow. Artico visited the newly renovated Brazilian American Cultural Center to find out more about Caparera from its co-director, Mestra Bama, an actual Caparera master and student of the art since 1980. In Rio, Capoeira became more of a studied form. They evolved it more. And so, it became more well known. But the fundamentals of capoeira are from Bahia. My father trained capoeira. He trained with Mestre Bimba, who is the founder of Capoeira Regional. Mas meu pai nunca me ensinou capoeira. But my father never taught me capoeira. Ele sempre falava que ele não queria isso para mim. He always said he didn't want that for me. E eu ficava, eu ficava olhando. Só so like, well, why? Why is this? Porque um dos melhores amigos dele. Because one of his best friends. Faleceu numa roda. De died in a capoeira roda. So a hoda of capoeira is when you come together and you play in a circle against each other. A lot of people think capoeira is just a dance. Capoeira is a fight, like boxing, karate, like taekwondo, like judo. Yes, with capoeira you can hurt yourself. You can hurt someone. And you can also be hurt yourself. They kick in Taekwondo. In karate, they kick as well. But the capoeira kick is a more violent kick. Because we train our, our kick kind of with an exact positioning. Master Obama is a master teacher and over the years has observed how different students handle the challenges of capoeira. For students from the U.S., he says, it's all in the wrist. Here I've observed a lot of students are strong and maybe muscular, but the time to do like a push-up type movement or holding your body up, they tremble. So the role of capoeira in, in music in capoeira is music is like a debate. I sing a music to you. You respond to me. You sing a music to me. So today the music of capoeira is sometimes mixed mixed up. Mas qual é a função de música dentro de capoeira? Harmonia. So music creates Tem harmony capoeira. within capoeira. Mais so that the so that it's beautiful, more beautiful. The play of the capoeira is more beautiful. Um grupo de capoeira sem música. Because a group of capoeira without music? Não vai 
is not going anywhere. It's the part of the part of dancing capoeira is the music. So the way you're moving your body in that manner. That's where the music ends. The function of the birimbau in a capoeira roda. The birimbau is the instrument that orders the structure of a capoeira roda. And a roda, again, is the circle where people come together and play capoeira against each other. The birimbau, they call the capoeira. The birimbau calls the capoeira. And so the capoeira is playing capoeira, but he's obliged to listen to the birimbau and listen to what the birimbau is saying. So the, the game starts. For the two that are there, for two to leave, the two that are there to come together and play. I teach capoeira regional. Capoeira Angola is more on the floor. And regional is done more upright. That's the baseline physical difference. The capoeira game. Cup with a play. Movements. Who does the movement prettier than the other? Who, who, who goes in faster? Who dodges faster? A good capoeirista always has to be smiling. Playing like that? No. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Even if you want to go fight in the street, you don't have to show your anger. You have to be smiling. You know? This trips up your adversary. In addition to Caparera, the center has samba classes, Portuguese classes, all levels, Brazilian style cooking lessons, and new activities coming up as the fall gets underway. To find out more about the Brazilian American Cultural Center, go to BACCDC.org. Bus Boys and Poets was founded in 2005. It's the brainchild of Andy Shalal, who says the idea was to create a space to showcase the many layers of DC like its Chocolate City history, political activism, literacy, love of poetry, and its large artistic community. The pandemic has put a damper on some face-to-face -face activities, but things are still jumping online. And we got some updates from Andy outside his original Bus Boys and Poets location at the busy corner of 14th and V Streets, Northwest DC. It's a place where racial and cultural connections are consciously uplifted a place where art and culture and politics comes together and intentionally collides, a place where people can take a deliberate pause and feed their mind, body, and soul. And we believe creating places like this or spaces like this can actually begin to transform a community for the better. You know, the whole idea of gathering has been taken off the table, so we can't have people in here uh, crammed together. We used to have people like literally uh, shoulder to shoulder standing and listening to conversations, and that gives a really beautiful energy. So we started doing these Zoom dinners here, uh, where we invite uh, authors and chain makers and notable folks to be able to come and speak about issues uh, of interest to them, and it's a conversation. A very uh, non, non, um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not a formal conversation. It's more of a, just a, like a dinner party, like you're sitting having dinner with somebody. So we've had an ongoing series of different authors and writers that have been coming through this every single Friday at 6 p.m. It's a nice time, it's the end of the week, people are home anyway, you know, to zoom in and be able to watch this while you're having dinner was something that we really thought would be really fun to do. And it's been great. I mean, I've had uh, some tremendous authors, tremendous writers that have come on board, uh, and they love it. Uh, you know, everybody from Edwidge Dantecott to uh, Juno Diaz, to uh, Alicia Garza, to Angela Davis, to Cornell West, to Cory Booker, 
to uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones, you name it. It's been a lot of fun and uh, all you have to do is sign up on our Eventbrite by going to busboysandpoets.com. You look at the date and you sign up and then you'll get a link that you can actually zoom in. Uh, if you can zoom in uh, because it's full uh, for whatever reason, uh, you can actually watch it on Facebook Live. And we keep the, uh, the uh, conversations on Facebook uh, you know, forever so people can go back and review old ones that they haven't seen. So aside from the Zoom dinners that we do, which is every Friday at 6 p.m., we also do poetry because we're known for poetry. So we have an Instagram account, Instagram Live. You can, people can go in there and you get like a, a live notice that the program is about to start. And we usually get people, random people, from all over the country, all over the world, frankly, who sign up. So that kind of adds another layer. We also do uh, art online. Uh, we have our art curator. Her name is Carol Dyson. And she's a fantastic curator, a local artist, uh, art collector, actually, an art curator. And she's been doing our art here for many years. And now she moved it to online where they discuss the art that we have hanging in our spaces. We discuss about artists. We talk about murals. We talk about art in the city all kinds of things, what the impact of art on social change, etc. And we have Culture Queen, amazing woman that does this incredibly beautiful um, series for children. And she reads to them, she sings, she dances. She has a, an incredible amount of energy. So if, if, if I had a kid, I'd definitely put them in front of this show. The one thing we learned during this pandemic is there's different ways to reach audiences. Uh, you know, there's nothing that's going to replace human interaction, face to face, being in the same room. The energy that that gives you is really phenomenal. Uh, so that's that's not going to go away. We hope that we'll be able to bring that back uh, sooner than later. Uh, but you know, we also have found new audiences. We have found new ways to be able to uh, reach people. The pandemic has opened up opportunities for us uh, that we will continue doing way beyond the pandemic when it's over. And if you want more details about Busboys online events, visit busboysandpoets.com. Writer artist Letha Francis is this month's article at home featured guest. Letha sent us this video she created and performed at her place in Bowie, Maryland. Hi, and greetings to everyone out there. My name is Letha. I'm an artist, Hi. I'm a writer, and I'm the owner of a company called L Ink Link, which links art the owner and wellness. L Ink was formed, um, has been from the very beginning, um, to highlight the power for words. Um, has been because I really do believe that they have the power to empower, to affirm the strength that they have the power to. towering over trees of life while people scurry and starve over ground full of seeds quarantine quarantine the need to control to keep systems in place that maintain the status quo rather than heal it allow love to make a way to find solutions to problems that have yet to be solved to be left on the back burner to be charred and scald like thoughts 
ripped from wombs to work fields for no pay, then thrown out in the wilderness to find their own way. Quarantine that. Alchemy of love teachings can erase the debt, 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 the lack of depth of thought concerning our fellow woman and man for those left behind to do what they can because your half concern cannot sustain a full life. should die while others reap. If love brought us here, it can surely sustain us all. Free genius minds to help answer that call. To create a more sustainable life, nurturing space. To live, to learn. Make this grace, make this place, make this space our own. Looking for fun things to do? Just Arts, a celebration of arts and activism, streams free this month. Presented by Olney Theater Center, the series showcases Black, Indigenous, and artists of color and the tradition of social justice. Check their website for more details. The Woolly Mammoth Theatre Company is a national innovator in the development and production of new plays. A DC treasure is one of the best known mid-sized theaters in the country. They have a number of interesting projects underway, including preparation for the upcoming winter-spring season and a unique audio anthology. Woolly Mammoth leans into unconventional theater always, has always done so. So in this moment of the pandemic, which is forcing our theaters and performing arts to transform, we're actually choosing to view it as an opportunity to experiment with new forms and new ideas and expand the definition of what the theater could be. So we've do, we're doing a ton of work in new mediums, including online, digital, and most recently on the telephone. We had been uh, talking about doing a piece with the Telephonic Literary Union for a while. And when the pandemic hit, we hit the gas on that piece because it was a way that we can create work from the safety of our own homes. The piece is called Human Resources, and it is a take on a customer service hotline. Hello, Woolly Mammoth Theater Company and Telephonic Literary Union are pleased to bring you Human Resources, an intimate audio anthology to be experienced over your telephone. To file a claim, claim, or plan your escape, dial 800-804-1573 or visit woollymammoth.net. That's 800-804-1573 or visit woollymammoth.net. So we commission these playwrights and a composer to create pieces based on the idea of a customer service hotline that I was that was actually there to promote connection between the listener and the artist, rather than most customer service hotlines, I don't know about you, are the most frustrating experience in the whole wide world. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. So it's subverting the form, there's irreverence and humor in it, and there's even a super secret happiness code that you might be able to unlock if you actually choose your own adventure on the telephone menu. Uh, I am so happy to be here on WHUT, Howard University Television, particularly because this year we announced a core partnership with Howard University. Woolly Mammoth has a long-standing history of working with the theater department at Howard University, and we are gonna to continue to do so, in, especially in a more formalized way with master classes for students, doing productions together, and figuring out ways that Howard University students can actually infiltrate the American theater and get jobs afterwards. One of our upcoming projects is actually a production of the Pulitzer Prize winning musical, A Strange Loop by Michael R. Jackson. And I'm 
incredibly excited not only to have it on our stage, but because there is a major opportunity, potentially for a Howard University graduate, student, alum. We are right now casting the lead role of Usher in that musical. And so hopefully uh, folks will come out and audition. We're doing a nationwide search. Please go to our website to find out more about the casting of Usher and please submit your tapes. Maybe we'll find somebody here right in DC. We are hoping to come back in the winter spring and the first show that we are hoping to have with small audiences is this show called Black is Beautiful but it sure ain't pretty which is a show by Kareem Lucas where he is talking about his you know trials and tribulations of uh, dating and finding love and intimacy Hello, Woolly Mammoth Theatre Company and Telephonic Literary Union are pleased to bring you Human Resources. Human Resources will be around until the end of October. To find out more about this production and other Woolly projects, visit WoollyMammoth.net. Well, I started out as a musician, and I started out as recording myself. And people heard what I was doing for myself and asked me if I could do that for them. And then since then I've been doing it for everybody for a long time. So I've worked with folk artists, jazz artists, classical artists, rock artists, hip hop artists over the years, just about anything you could think of. I've recorded lots of different people locally, from Warren Wolf, who's a really international vibe player, one of the greatest vibe players in the world. I've worked with Sharon Clark, is one of amazing singer. There's no place on earth I'd rather be. Just show me some bright lights, big cities for me. Mm -hmm. Lena Cycli, another great there jazz singer. Many gospel artists, lots of singer-songwriters. Uh, with singer-songwriters, it's nice because a lot of time I get to produce and play instruments. We have two locations. We have a Silver Spring location, which is the bottom half of a building where my studio is. And then here in Kensington, we have a sound stage. The difference is the uh, Silver Spring location is built for isolation with instruments in individual rooms. So that when you record the piano, you don't have to worry about the drums drowning it out. They're in a separate room. You don't have to worry about the singer leaking onto the guitar. In Kensington, we have a stage. We have a piano, drums, everything. People play together in the same room. You embrace it and you make it work. Blue House Live, by name, probably has only been around since the beginning of March. But Blue House Productions has always done streaming and live concerts and videos for bands and groups. So just luckily, the setup that we had was sort of, for better or for worse, built for the pandemic. All these people that I work with over the years, and I'm still friends with them. These people are important to me. They've lost their work. They've lost their ability to play. So, you know, I need, I felt, wow, what can we do? You know, I thought, they need to play, they want to play. And, geez, I need to pay the rent. So those two things together said, well, why don't we just see if people would come in and play since they can't play in a club, but they come play here, let's broadcast it to their fans. Let's get it out there so anybody who wants to see it can see it. I didn't want to put up any walls between people watching the video. So we made the stream, as it's called, for free. So people could come, and what we do is we ask for donations for the musicians and to support the stream. But we decided to use two really popular platforms, Facebook and YouTube, and we broadcast on those platforms. So we'll say, that, hey, this event's gonna happen at a certain time, and here's where you're gonna be able to see it. So if anybody goes to Blue House Live on Facebook, you can see the event list of everything that's happening here. And right now it runs about 70% jazz, 20% uh, classical, and 10% everything else. In art, we do lots of R&B, and it, it's great. And the wonderful thing is these musicians who couldn't play now can play, and since they've sort of been pent up since March, you get an amazing show, you get an energy you've never seen. Oh, me.
me tie. Why must I tell you what to do? They treat it like they know the audience is there and it's wonderful to see. And we're in here broadcasting and we see all the people, what they call the chat, you know, who are commenting on the event. And oh my gosh, the audience is just loving it. They are so happy to have music. We can have as much as three or four streams a week, groups a week. We try and schedule them out. When an artist wants to do something, we try and schedule it out a couple weeks ahead of time so we can advertise it and let people know about it. We've had up to 1,200 people watching. We really care about social distancing here, and we make sure people are six feet apart as much as possible. We also have plexiglass screens we put between musicians. We're doing this, these streams because it's, it's a great interaction with the musicians and the community. It's the feeling of togetherness, like a friendship and fellowship that comes from it, is really what makes the big deal. Plus, wow, I get to see a great show, you know, several times a week. You know, it's like magic. That's our show for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, always remember to follow your art.